Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'm going to show you how to cycle from King's Cross in central London to Walthamstow in the far northeast corner of London. Um, believe it or not, this takes uh, about sort of 50 minutes to an hour. And as always on this channel, you can do the whole route on just segregated cycle lanes and very quiet streets. If you want to see more routes like that, do hit subscribe below now. So let's go. Um, we're starting outside St Pancras Station and uh, we're actually going to start by going uh, in a bit of a counterintuitive direction we're going to go south for a little bit um, only for a short period of time and the reason we're going south uh, along Midland Road here it's all on a segregated cycle track is uh, just to get us in line with the right route there's you know we, we're not going to be going on main roads so we want to get on uh, on a decent route where you're not going to encounter many cars you cross the Euston Road and you head down Judd Street the first section of this route is uh, it's on low traffic streets so Judd Street has had most of its through traffic removed by being closed at one end you saw we came through on a sort of uh, cycle track there um, cars can't follow so you know you won't see many on the street and it's gonna be like that for a while uh, by the way uh, people who have seen previous videos might have noticed that I have a new camera so uh, this one has image stabilization so it's not gonna be as bouncy as uh, the previous videos were so I, I think it's a massive upgrade in quality so uh, yeah, it's all going to look a little bit nicer. Um, you just carry on through here. And uh, this is quite, this. if you've watched any of the previous videos, this is a pretty well-travelled route to start with. You just go straight here through onto Ampton Street. That's another bollard, so cars can't follow you. That's a nice thing about um, zipping around quiet streets. Sort of staying away from motor traffic. And you go right here. And you go straight down here. Um... Now, when we get to the end of this street, we'll be confronted with a junction. Um, you can either go straight on, and that, that'll take you towards South London, or you can go left, and that'll take you towards East London. And that's the way we're going, down Calthorpe Street. Um, there's a short section here that's just on a painted cycle lane, but it's usually all right. You can see, you know, there's sort of parents with kids on it. And you go straight up. And onto Marjorie Street, there's a sort of protected contraflow lane, because this this street is one way for cars, but it's two ways for bikes. Um, by the way, this is a bit of a hill. Uh, so, yeah. Also, the surface is terrible. The bike will be rattling around loads. Uh, but, you know, don't let that deter you. It's still the best way to go. Now, uh, we're actually going to start following a Transport for London signposted route from now on. Um, we won't be following it the whole way, but for now we're following Q2. Uh, which stands for Quiet Way 2. So basically Transport for London has mapped out uh, a quiet route through the back streets. Um, so there's a lot of these around London. Some of them are good, some of them aren't so good. Q2 is pretty good now. It actually, funnily enough, when it was uh, first installed, it actually wasn't very good at all. It was just through the sort of uh, back streets of Islington and they hadn't really done very much to uh, to make the streets quiet. It, it was just that they weren't main roads. Um, there are a few things like this, you know, those little bollarded areas. But uh, since the COVID pandemic, Islington has put in a lot of low traffic neighbourhoods where they basically closed off a lot of streets to cars, left them open to bikes, and that's actually transformed the route. It's, it's much, much nicer to cycle on now. So you can see we're just following these Q2 symbols on the road. Um, it's actually quite... You've got to, I wouldn't go too fast if this is your first time cycling this route, by the way, because you can get lost. Um, there are a couple of shot zones, just keep an eye out for that Q2, and also arrows, sometimes they have an arrow that points to go around a corner, and um, those are the ones where you can miss them if you're not keeping an eye out. Sometimes there are little purple signs as well on lampposts, um, but they're a little bit harder to spot. These streets that we're on now are uh, a really good example, by the way, of, the, of what I was talking about a minute ago. They, they weren't particularly traffic free or particularly quiet before the... Uh, the streets to the street space measures came in during the pandemic but now they're actually really really good to ride on and you can see there's almost no motor traffic around at all and quite a lot of people on bikes taking advantage of them as well and uh, we're about to go through a bus gate these little blue signs here this is buses and cycles only and then there is a turn on the left here that you won't want to miss um, it's quite easy to to not spot that one and we just keep following q2 now, we're actually going to go onto a street which is a pretty good illustration of the difference that low traffic neighbourhoods make. Um, the street on the right here, Popham Street, Popham Road, sorry, it's not actually been properly filtered, so it's still useful as a cut through for cars to get to Essex Road. And look at that, there's absolutely loads of them. We're about to get nearly hit by a BMW. So, yeah, 
Fortunately, that's it's only that very short section that hasn't been properly filtered, but that's what a lot of these roads were like. Um, these batteries were used as cut-throughs for cars, um, following Google Maps directions, Waze, uh, other apps like that. And uh, that's all gone now because they can't do it, because bollards and planters basically stop them. Various road closures that still let bikes and pedestrians through, uh, but keep the most traffic out. But yeah, that, that one road there, Popham Road, is a good reminder of what these streets were like before the low traffic neighbourhoods were introduced. And by the way, if you're finding this video useful, interesting, mesmerising, anything really, uh, and you want to see more like it, do hit subscribe. I do videos, you know, uh, showing you routes like this all over London, and I plan for many, many more. Um, and uh, yeah, we're now in Hackney, by the way. Uh, this is a part of town called De Beaver, which I've apparently for the last 10 years been mispronouncing as De Beauvoir, but somebody told me that I've been saying it wrong. And apparently that's also what the Beaver Town Brewery is named after, because it used to be based here. The more you know. De Beaver's great to cycle around. Um, it was an early adopter of uh, sort of low traffic neighbourhoods, so you can see all these old bollards. Um, and yeah, it's been like this for ages. And you can see there's just so many people just getting around on bikes, even though it's, you know, February. These are the sorts of days that everyone says, oh, no one's going to be cycling when it's cold. But it's cold and everyone is cycling. Um, now we're heading forward onto Middleton Road. Uh, this is close to traffic at one end. You can just see we went through that filter that said no cars. Um, it wasn't physically blockaded off, but most people do seem to be obeying the restrictions. Um, I think they leave them open like that so it doesn't affect emergency vehicles, because that's one of the things that people often object to road closures on the basis of. Middleton Road was actually quite a recent road closure, I think it was only last year, um, and uh, it's, it's just a huge difference, like it didn't used to be a particularly nice place to cycle down. Um, I don't know if you remember the bit a few seconds ago at the beginning where it goes into almost like an underpass. Imagine going through that at high speed with you know, all sorts of traffic. Um, there were various attempts to sort of traffic calm. You saw, you saw we went through some chicanes. There's a few more chicanes coming up. There are these speed bumps. None of them really did the job until they just closed it to one end of motor traffic. And that just immediately sorted out overnight. There's one of these chicanes I was talking about here, by the way. That was one of the earlier attempts to uh, to slow down traffic or to make it nice to cycle on. Um, we're now going on to London Fields, uh, a nice park in Hackney. And uh, yeah, this, this bit's shared with pedestrians, so I'll give my usual caveat, you know, you can see I'll slow right down, because it's sort of pedestrian priority on this shared path here. Um, and you don't want to scare anyone or make, make anyone feel uncomfortable when they're walking around. Um, however, this bit <laughs> is, supposed to be, uh, is supposed to be bikes only, but so people walking in the lane uh, should really get out of the way. But you should probably still be nice to them anyway. Now, we come out here onto Martello Street, which is quite a nice name, and uh, we're about to keep following Q2. So we're going to turn right here, don't miss this turning, onto uh, London Lane, which is quite a generic name for a lane within the boundaries of London. There's quite an interesting piece of infrastructure coming up here, actually. I've not seen it anywhere else in London. There's Look at these um, the waiting islands in the middle here. So normally turning right on a road is quite uh, can be quite annoying. But they've put this little uh, island with a sort of protected curb and bollards, sort of really thin bollards, to sort of protect you while you're waiting to turn. Um, I'd like to see more of those actually, because um, right turns are one of the one of the things in London that we've not really sorted out for cycling. Um, but yeah, we're just still following Q2 here, and this follows sort of a mixture of back streets and uh, sort of back paths in Hackney, of which there are many. And uh, yeah, it's, you can see the sun's come out actually. It's actually quite a lovely day. Um, everyone's out here enjoying what might even be the first day of spring. But make sure you follow the arrows, the Q2 arrows. What we're doing here, by the way, if you know Hackney well at all, um, this basically, this route kind of avoids the busiest bit of Mare Street, which has no cycling provision on it at all. So just coming up here is another cycle crossing. Um, I would... There, it is attached to a zebra crossing. To be honest, I wouldn't trust motorists to stop on it though, because I think most people don't really understand what a cycle crossing is and whether it, whether who's right away it is. So yeah, just be careful on that one. And um, now we're going around the back of St John at Hackney, which is the church just there. You can see up ahead, very smart church. Um, and that's the proof that we've basically avoided the busiest bit of Mare Street. You can tell, because this sits on Mare Street. 
Um, this path is shared with pedestrians, so definitely don't go too fast. There's a little bit of um, sort of deliberately rumbly pave paving to sort of slow you down. And uh, this takes us across one another one of those crossings onto Clapton Square. If there are any history buffs in the house, you might be interested to know that this square is where Vladimir Lenin stayed when he visited London in, I think, around 1905. He stayed with a friend who lived on the square. Uh, we are going on to Clapton Passage. This is again shared with pedestrians, so yeah, you know, be uh, be courteous. And another one of these zebra crossings here, and you'll see exactly why I say be careful. Yeah, that guy just goes straight in front of us. Nice, nice man. So we're now on Powerscroft Road. Um, this street is probably the busiest street on the entire route, actually. Um, as you can see, there aren't actually many cars at all, um, but it's not really quite filtered in the way that the others are and I should warn you there is also actually a bus route on it so you are liable to encounter buses um, I think we actually pass one any second now yet yeah, there it is coming over the hill oh yeah this is a hill so if you're doing it oh god that was a bit close um, so if you're doing it in the opposite direction then uh, yeah you will have to pedal but it's not a not particularly steep one now uh, yeah bear left onto this ship shared area with the pedestrians and get ready for a cycle crossing and uh, this is taking us onto Millfields Park which is a nice little park in Hackney and again this is sort of shared with pedestrians um, by the way this was shot on a, uh, a sort of Saturday lunchtime um, on probably the first sort of sunny-ish day of the year in 2021 so um, the shared pedestrian bits are absolutely heaving and they won't normally be this um, this busy if you're using it for like a commute or something like that. Um, you go left here by the way. We're actually still just for now following Q2 although uh, we will leave it in a second and we take it onto this nice filtered street. You can tell it's a filtered nice street because there was someone skateboarding on it and uh, just follow down here and uh, this is actually where we leave Q2 so just cross the road here on the uh, joint pedestrian and cycle crossing and then turn right onto the bridge. Um, make sure you stick here. And uh, yeah, it's, there is a cycle lane here, but it's just about to get a whole lot better. So that portion of the route that we did on Quiet Streets is pretty much done now. That's sort of the way that Hackney deals with it. We're now crossing into Waltham Forest, the borough. And um, Waltham Forest, a few years ago, was given, uh, was sort of, the flagship council for uh, when Boris Johnson was mayor it had a lot of cycle funding allocated to it to create what they called a mini Holland which is a bit of a weird name but it basically meant that they would intensively build cycling infrastructure in the borough and show how good it could be and to be honest they've done an absolutely fantastic job um, there are a few boroughs that have this same status and Waltham Forest is by far and away the way 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 the best one um, this is Leebridge Road and there's pretty much a protected cycleway of like exceptionally good standard the whole way up. There's a couple of bits where it's a little bit compromised because of a lack of space, um, but you can see the results. There's just absolutely loads of people um, on their bikes, getting around, doing journeys. And that's what happens when you build infrastructure to this standard and you create a usable network. Um, you make it look like the Netherlands and you get people cycling in the way they do in the Netherlands because you don't have to dress up or you know wear special clothes to take a journey on a bike it's just the obvious option uh, for local journeys and uh, yeah this is a testament to what what you can achieve so you might have noticed I haven't given too many directions in the last few minutes that's because this part of the journey is pretty much just straight up Leebridge Road um, you go through uh, Leighton and I think Baker's Arms as well um, and then at some point we're going to turn off left to get to Walthamstow uh, and I'll tell you when that is but uh, yeah for now all you have to really do is just obey the signals and uh, keep going and we can cover a lot of ground on this infrastructure because you know we've got priority over side roads we're not stopping all the time you might notice there are signals that apply to the motor traffic bit of the road but not to us um, and yeah, there are a few bits where it's a bit narrower. I think this bit coming up here, yeah, there you go. That's slightly narrower. They did another space to make it as wide as you'd like it to be. But I think the main thing is that it's continuous and that it's protected from motor traffic. 
One nice thing I'd like to point out about the way that Waltham Forest has done this, by the way, is the side roads. If you look at those, whenever a side road comes up, the pavement is continuous over the entrance to the side road. Um, and that really shows motor traffic who has priority. Um, and it just makes it much more pleasant to walk and cycle across it. You can see there, um, the pavement and the footway is continuous across the entrance to the junction. Now coming up in a few seconds is probably the most compromised bit of the um, of the Leebridge Road cycleway. Um, it's when it gets to the town centre and the junction with Ho Street, which is um, how you normally go up to Walthamstow if you run a car or just on the main road. It's uh, just here. Now when we cross this road, it's very briefly shared with pedestrians and you can see it does create some conflict. Now Walthamstow is actually up on the left there, but we're not going that way. Yeah, see here, this is this is shared here, so do be careful. But very quickly, we're back to our own path. Now there are actually a few places you could turn left here, depending on where, you, where in Walthamstow you actually want to go. Um, basically all the side streets coming off to the left will get you to Walthamstow and most of them are in a low traffic neighbourhood but we're going to go up Copeland Road because it's filtered, you just saw we went through those bollards and then we're also going to turn left here onto Clarendon Road and then right straight away onto Pembroke Road and now we just go straight for a pretty long time although we're nearly there so it's not a very long time do be careful at these junctions by the way because we don't have priority at them so you have to give way um, this is a quiet street. Uh, you can see why it's quiet in a second because it's filtered at one end. So it's a low traffic neighborhood. Basically all the traffic's been taken out and uh, it's actually quite nicely done. There's a, a bridge coming up here um, and it's kind of the centerpiece of the neighborhood and the, ca the council's done a really good job I think here because you can see all these people just sort of walking in the road and yeah, it's here. And these bollards are basically what's keeping the area quite uh, quite low traffic. Then we turn left here onto St Mary's Road. And believe it or not, we're actually nearly there. We're about to pop up right opposite Walthamstow Central Station on this little track here. And we've got it. We're here. If you like this video, please do hit subscribe because there's more like it. Um, I'm doing routes all over London. And they're all quiet streets. They're all cycle lanes. Uh, just trying to show people how you can get around the city easily. Uh, thanks very much for watching to the end, guys. And goodbye. See you next time.